Hey everyone, this is Battery Blade and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you which NAX to Tesla adapter you should get for your non-Tesla EV, which one you should get for your home, and which one you should keep in your vehicle so you can charge a destination charger. Now this is an important video because one of these adapters I spent good money on and it did not work at all. So this is an important video to watch to make sure you actually get a working adapter. In this video, I'm going to discuss things like the form factor and which ones have like the best ergonomics. These have a very different feel when you're plugging them in. And of course, like I said, one of the adapters in this video does not work at all. So it's your guess till the end. This is the Electron adapter. So they're a uh, very reputable, reputable company in the electric vehicle space. Uh, they make chargers and all sorts of uh, portable equipment and this one you can see it's the largest of all my adapters it's their 40 amp unit which uh, I'm just gonna say 40 amps is not good enough when people have 60 amp breakers that do 48 amps it will melt this adapter so beware with this one now let's get into the second adapter this is the bookman 48 amp adapter this is made by some company in Asia it is a lot, probably one of the lightest of the bunch, but it still feels pretty good quality plastic, but uh, got good ergonomics. It's an 80 amp adapter. Now this one, it even has the interesting feature is this locking mechanism right there that it comes with keys so no one can steal your adapter if your car doesn't uh, lock it in. And it's even uh, it's got strange looking pins there compared to the other ones. But that side looks pretty normal. And here's the button press. And this one is full metal. It's definitely the toughest quality of all the adapters, at least material wise. Now these two I bought from separate listings. They are some generic brand of Tesla to J1772 adapters, what you'll see in the listing. So if you see one like this, you'll probably get a generic if you can't find a brand anywhere. What the only thing I see is that it's an aloe uh, or something like that. But it's a 48 amp unit. It's got a good locking mechanism, good latch. So it's overall pretty quality. Now I got an Orion Motors. Uh, Tesla to J1772 adapter. Now I know this brand because I got a CCS adapter from them and it was extremely high quality. But this product, the latch is kind of flimsy. It's definitely not, it's one of the lowest quality and materials adapter of them all here. Now let's get into the test to see which ones actually work. Now let's try out the Electron adapter. It's the longest, but with this thick cable right here, it gives the Tesla connector plenty of slack to hang down at a 90 degree angle. And we started charging immediately. This one has pretty good ergonomics, or not pretty good, it's about the same as any J1772 connector because it's got that long ponytail. And we're charging, we get the full power out of this. Actually, we only get 40 amps is the max. Luckily, that's what our, uh, that's our Tesla wall connector is on a 40 amp or 50 amp breaker means it only gets 40 amp. So this adapter is safe for us to use, but do not buy if you have a 60 amp breaker, you will melt this. Let's unplug and move on to the next one. Now these are the basic no brand Alulula uh, adapters. You won't see the manufacturer listed in the listing. I'll have the link to every adapter in this video down below. Um, but now let's try these guys out, see if these are the broken adapters. Now these adapters, the ergonomics, they're uh, probably the strangest of the bunch. So you almost hold your hand on the Tesla connector and sort of pinch the bottom part of the adapter. So it works, but it's a little strange, more strange than the uh, just full J1772 adapter, but it's definitely a lot smaller. So I prefer that about this adapter over the Electron. See, charging started. Now, let's try the white one. I've charged uh, several times with each of these adapters to make sure they last uh, overnight through the 
full intense 10 hours of charging at full speed. So this is just demonstrating it and charging started. Which color do you like better? I'm not sure. I think I might, because the uh, white matches the wall connector's uh, body, but the black works better with the handle. This is the Orion Motors adapter. It's the uh, cheapest feeling of the bunch and it has a sliding locking mechanism, which is a bit different than the other ones. Plug it in, it's got a cheap feeling latch. Your hand is definitely higher up on it than the other adapters, uh, but your thumb is kind of too far forwards to press the button, so then you do this when your hand's sort of resting on the latch, but not an adapter problem. Now we're charging with the Orion Motors adapter. Let's unplug and move on to the next one. Now I'm here with the Bookman adapter. This is the smallest of the bunch. I like the uh, ergonomics of it because instead of holding onto a J1772 connector, you get this nice thin Tesla, uh, Tesla Nax cord or handle to uh, hold onto. And you can see it's got a very thick latch. I'm not that worried about this one breaking, except everything about it is very, very plasticky. So it's very thick plastic latch, which I like but definitely not metal. Now you plug it in, and now it says charging started. So the Bookman adapter, of course, works. It's one of my favorite of the bunch, but I'm not sure about the quality that I probably wouldn't get this for my home connector every day, especially because look, when the connector is locked in, the, uh, core, the handle still slides in and out by about uh, half a centimeter which apparently it still charges even like that, but I don't like that sort of loose connection, which is fine if this is the adapter you're keeping in your glove box to use once in a while on a destination charger. But at home every day, I don't feel comfortable using this one, even though it feels the nicest to hold. Now let's move on to the last one. Here with the Jaleesley or whatever the heck this thing is called, is this one, even though it has the highest quality metal connector of them all, the sliding lockinism is broken. And now, even before it was broken, it wouldn't charge. Let me show you, this one does not charge. Kind of dangerous do, uh, plugging this in without a locking mechanism because someone could yank the Tesla connector out at any moment. You plug it in here, uh, which this one does come with the keys that you can lock this uh, connector from somebody pushing it up. It does not charge, now let's pull it out. Make sure that's in there tight, and since the locking mechanism is broken, it said unsuccessful one time, so now it should work on the second. And this one's also kind of hardest to get in there. We'll say unsuccessful once again, because this one is full metal, but somehow the worst quality, like the uh, Chinese manufacturers, never actually tested it out. I'm going to show you why it doesn't actually work. It's a, a unique thing in the J1777 standard that means that this one won't work. Now this is my uh, J1772 Tesla adapter AD amps that comes with every Tesla. I'm going to use it to show you why this does not charge our car. The reason is when you push in the uh, Tesla adapter, you can see the latch doesn't go down far enough. It's like it's not long enough or just not spring loaded enough because it's hard to push it down but uh the ev6 or any j1772 car cannot charge if the latch doesn't go down because that's a safety feature when you pull down push the latch means you're pulling out the cord which means this car at any point in the charging session you can just pull the cord out and make your car arc which is why this connector does not work even before I actually broke the uh, locking mechanism by just uh, handling it. So somehow on a metal adapter, they had a cheap locking mechanism and they didn't design this enough. This is what the latch is supposed to look like. When you press down, it goes in and it latches. You heard it, clicks. The latch is inside there. So you can't pull the connector out and you have to do that and then it stops the charging. But the problem is the other Bookley, or not Bookley, um, Jingsley or whatever the Chinese name is, uh, or Asian name, it would not allow you to um, 
press it down so it was always in an open state that somebody could pull it out so the EVs are smart enough to not charge. Now the Allah blah, 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 whatever the name is, it fits in perfectly. It latches how you're supposed to. The other Allah blah, blah, works in fine. There are 48 amps, clicks in. Here's the Bookman adapter. Works not quite as smooth as the other ones because the other ones, uh, I can recognize that connector as an off the uh, shelf J J1772 connector handle that they uh, remade for their special adapter. And then this is the Orion motors, which other than the one that doesn't work at all is the worst of the test because you have to push it in hard, the hardest and then it barely, it does a little weak flimsy latch right there. And when you pull it out, look, it's even air pressured that it knocks this connector off. That, uh, so it's the hardest to plug into the charge port other than the uh, one that doesn't latch at all. So, but it still works and it's a uh, fine connector. Now I'm gonna give you my final thoughts on which adapter you should buy and which one you should not buy. Obviously, do not buy the Jingsley. I'll have a link down below that says do not buy, so that way you know what the Amazon page looks like. Especially because that one is an 80 amp one, so if you're an F-150 uh, Lightning owner with an 80 amp onboard charger, it might be tempting to get that for the destination chargers, but uh, do not. And none of these adapters other than that one say for 80 amps, which means if you have an F-150 Lightning and you're planning on plugging into 80 amp Tesla destination chargers, don't buy any of these guys. But if you're like uh, me with any other EV, EV or even a Rivian only has a 60 amp onboard charger, uh, this video works perfectly fine. It's only for F-150s. This Bookman adapter is my favorite for travel and it's also my favorite to use just because you get to hold that uh, nice slick Nax connector. It is nice and small that you can keep this in your glove box anywhere in the car. Like it would even fit in a cup holder, but that would be a waste. So this one's my favorite for travel. It would be my favorite overall if it doesn't slide in and out by like that half a centimeter or whatever, that even though it still charges, it's slightly worrying me about the longevity, but I'm not at all worried about it uh, breaking on road trips because you'd only use that once a week at the maximum. But every day, I'm not so sure about this adapter. It does have a nice thick latch, but it's not the uh, standard latch like on the Electron and Alala because I um, don't know about this one and the longevity of it, but I think it's a great adapter um, and maybe you should buy this just to keep in your glove box. This is the Orion Motors adapter of the bunch. It is probably one of my least favorites because of how flimsy this latch is. It's uh, got a weird sliding mechanism, which on the road is nicer that it's less intuitive to use and less likely someone's gonna steal your adapter or just mess with it. But uh, at home, it's like kind of, it's, it's not as simple if you have your children unplug your car or something like that to plug in the Tesla. And uh, this, this latch, if you drop it, this one will break. So I do not recommend the Orion Motors, but I can't say about all their products because they made a CCS adapter that I use every time I uh, go to a CCS charger with their Tesla and it works just fine and looks exactly like the OEM one. But this one right here, do not buy. Hmm. Lastly, this is the Gene Z uh, adapter. This one I had so much hope for because it's a great size. It has a locking mechanism, which many people don't think about, especially because the the uh, cars don't have really a uh, built-in locking mechanism that somebody can unplug it and then unplug it from your connector and take your adapter. I don't think very many people do that, but uh, it's good to have that key system. But um, even with all this high quality materials, their locking mechanism broke apart when I was just messing around with it. This is a terrible adapter. Like I didn't even drop it and it broke. Uh, uh, everything about it was high quality, but it just looks like they were not uh, testing it enough when they made this. High quality materials doesn't make up for a lack of engineering, is what I would call for for this adapter. 
This is the stupid broken adapter that you should not buy, but it comes with a nice case. So if you want a good case to put a broken adapter in, get this brand. Link in the description. Thank you all for watching. Shout out to Star and Dirty Tesla. Please subscribe, like, and comment. I'll see you all later. Goodbye.